Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to start this new chapter of cost accounting that is labor costing. And the first topic that I'm going to discuss to you of this chapter is labor turnover. So see the meaning of labor turnover here, it's very simple. Labor turnover of an organization is change in the labor force during a specified period measured against a suitable index. Simple as that. Yeah. Labor turnover is nothing but just the movement of employees. How many employees have joined the organization and how many employees have left the organization? That is what is labor turnover. What does labor turnover tells you? It shows you the change that has happened in your labor force. How many employees have come into the organization and how many employees have gone out of the organization? Just the change in the composition of labor during a specified period. Mostly it's a year. Okay. Labor turnover is mostly calculated for a year. Right. So see here, is it a good thing or a bad thing to have a high labor turnover? You have to understand that. Yeah. If I tell you there's a company called ABC and it has 30 percent labor turnover. And let me tell you, 30% is a very high labor turnover, okay, 30%. So, if this ABC company has 30% labor turnover, that means 30% of labor is changing in that company, right? 30% of change we can see in that ABC company. What 30% change? 30% change in the labor force of that company. And that's a very bad thing. Why is it a bad thing? See here, the reason for that is, see here, it's very simple. High employee turnover increases the cost of production in the following ways. Even flow of production is disturbed. Of course, it is disturbed. Employees are keep on changing their efficiency is disturbed. Yeah, because the new employees wouldn't be able to, you know, have the same efficiency as the experienced employees, the old employees. So efficiency of new workers is low. Productivity of new but experienced workers is low in the beginning. Yeah, that's the thing. There is increased cost of training and induction. Of course, if you keep on changing the employees, then you have to incur lots of labor cost. Yeah, cost on training and induction. Yes, new workers cost, increased breakage of tools, wastage of materials. Yeah, due to their inefficiency, they wouldn't be familiar, right? It will take some time to become familiar with the machines and everything. Yeah, the methods that are used in the in the factory. Yeah, and then cost of recruitment and training increases. Yeah, that's the thing. So these are the reasons why high labor turnover is not a good thing. Yeah, the company shouldn't have the high labor turnover so it becomes very essential for any organization to measure its labor turnover okay and we have three methods to do that separation method replacement method and flux method yeah we can't just calculate it just like that we have proper formulas and proper methods to calculate labor turnover so see here three methods we have got separation replacement and flux method now this flux method is also called as dual method all right right so see here the separation method in this method, number of employees left is taken into consideration. How many employees have left the organization? Number of employees separated from the organization, number of separations divided by average number of workers. Now, how do you calculate average number of workers? It's very simple. Number of employees at the beginning plus number of employees at the end of the period divided by two. That's how you are going to calculate the average number of workers. Okay. So that's a formula you have to use to calculate average number of workers and just, you know, use this formula to calculate the labor turnover according to the separation method. Right. And then we have got replacement method. The number of employees replaced is taken into consideration for calculating labor turnover. Right. Yeah. Number of replacement divided by average number of workers into 100. Now, average number of workers is the same thing. Yeah. Opening plus closing divided by two. Yeah. The number of workers that were there at the beginning of the period plus at the end of the period divided by two. That's how you're going to get average number of workers. And what is number of replacement? How many positions that were, you know, separated that were left now have been replaced that you have to take into consideration the number of employees replaced. Okay, that's what. And then the third method is the combination of separation and replacement. Just that. Okay, see here under this method, labor turnover is calculated by taking both replacement and separations into consideration. Separations also, replacement also, add them two together and divided by average number of workers into 100. Simple as that. 
it's very simple these three methods right so now let's solve one problem on this and let's understand this practically now here we have the problem see the question over here following information relates to personnel department for the month of may 2020 so here we have been given information of personnel department for a month right may 2020 right so when we calculate labor turnover rate we would get labor turnover rate of one month understood so see the question here number of workers on 1st may 950 number of workers on 31st may 1050 yeah this is the number of workers at the beginning of the period and this is the end of the period so why is this given to us because we can calculate average number of workers yeah average number of workers to calculate that what you have to do number of workers at the beginning plus number of workers at the end divide by two that's how you are going to calculate average number of workers and we use that average number of workers in all the methods right yes then they have given us number of workers quit 10 number of workers discharged that means we fired that is 30 30 employees were fired and then number of workers engaged how many employees we recruited that is 140 employees right 140 workers and then in bracket they have given us including 124 expansion scheme now see here now why is this given for expansion scheme to tell you that out of this 140 140 recruits yeah out of this 140 120 are new joinings 120 are not replacement out of this 140 120 are new joinings because they are meant for expansion scheme yeah then that means only 20 of this 140 are replacement understand the difference between replacement and new joinings we don't consider new joinings we only consider replacement while doing replacement method right so what does replacement mean see replacement means what let's say you were working in a company called abc you got fired right so then for that same position someone else was hired that is called replacement understood and in that abc company if they open an entirely new division okay and they hire some employees then that is not called replacement because there was nothing there to replace with that is called new joinings and new joinings are not considered only replacements are considered okay understand the difference between replacement and joinings okay so only 20 here are replacement right so let's solve this see here calculate ltr calculate labor turnover rate and equivalent annual rate now what is equivalent annual rate it's nothing but just the you know labor turnover rate on the basis of a year okay so see it's very simple let's calculate this right so first we are going to use the separation method okay we'll do from all the methods but in exams you have to do with only one method right but we will solve with all the methods so see here separation method what's the formula labor turnover rate is equal to number of separation right how many employees in total have left the company yeah have gone out of the company number of separations divided by average number of workers into 100 now we have number of separations given directly in the question but we don't have average number of workers so we have to calculate average number of workers first average number of workers is equal to how do you calculate that number of employees at the beginning of the period at the beginning of the period is first may that is 950 950 plus number of employees at the end of the period that is 31st may 1050 plus 1050 divide by 2 yes that's how you do it so if you put that into calculator 950 plus 1050 that is equal to 2000 yeah 2000 divided by 2 that is equal to 1000 so 1000 would be the average number of workers yeah and then put this in here right 40 now how is it 40 see number of workers quit 10 number of workers discharged yeah 30 so in total the separations are how much separations are 40 yeah 10 they quit by themselves and 30 employees were fired by us right by the company so now in total 40 employees are separated so number of separation is 40 divided by 1000 into 100 the formula right so that is equal to 4 percent 4 percent is the labor turnover rate of one month that is may 2020 simple that's how you calculate the labor turnover rate according to the separation method number of separation divided by average number of workers into 100 simple then what is equivalent annual rate equivalent annual rate is nothing but just the rate on the annual basis so how do you calculate that it's very simple see the formula here labor turnover rate yeah whatever that rate you have take that and then divide it by divided by the days months or week okay what days months week see here this four percent rate is of what period this is of one month period 
right of one month period so simple see here 4 divided by 31 why 31 because in May there are 31 days so divide by 31 into the number of days in a year or what you could have done is see here 4 divided by this labor turnover rate is meant of how much one month so 4 divided by 1 into 12 yeah you could have done like that also simple so see here this labor turnover rate 4 is of how much it is of one month may 31 days are there in the month of may divide by 31 that is equal to what some decimals into 365 days in a whole year because we are calculating annual rate right so days in the whole year 365 that gives you how much 47 point something yeah so 47 percent 47 is the equivalent annual rate yeah if for a month it is four percent then for what for the whole year what would be the rate 47 percent simple as that yeah that's how you have to go about it and then we have next method that is called replacement method see here number of replacement divided by average number of workers into 100 now we already have average number of workers right we have calculated that over here that is 1000 so now labor turnover rate is equal to number of replacement now i told you number of replacement here right number of workers engaged how many employees did we recruit we recruited 140 but 120 were meant for expansion scheme so only 20 are replacement the rest are new joinings right only 20 are replacement so you are going to take only 20 divided by 1000 average number of workers into 100 2 percent is the labor turnover rate then how are you going to calculate equivalent annual rate simple take the labor turnover rate the labor turnover rate divide by the number of days months or week that labor turnover rate is off now this labor turnover rate two percent is off of month may of one month so divided by 31 days yeah because in the month of may we have 31 days so divided by 31 into the days in the whole year that is 365 yeah multiplied by 365 you get 23.54 let let's put that into calculator see here 2 divided by 31 yeah into 365 that is equal to how much 23.54 percent yeah for a month of may if labor turnover rate is two percent then for a year it is 23.54 percent simple yeah yeah so now what does this four percent and this two percent means see here four percent means that in the month of may four percent of your employees have separated they have gone out of your company and here two percent means what two percent of your employees in the month of may have been what they have been replaced with the new employees yeah this is what and then we have flux method and flux method is nothing but the combination of separation and replacement method yeah so see here what you're going to do is labor turnover rate is equal to separations now we know how many separations are there 40 right 10 plus 30 isn't it yes 40 plus 20 yeah 40 is the separation and replacement is 20 yeah replacement replacement is 20 divide by average number of workers you see the formula here separations plus replacement divided by average number of workers now we already have average number of workers that is 1000 right so 40 plus 20 divided by 1000 in 200 that's the formula so 40 plus 20 is 60 60 divided by 1000 in 200 that gives you 6% simple as that right and then equivalent annual rate how will you do that 6% is your labor turnover rate according to the flux method right and this is the labor turnover rate of month of May and in the month of May we have got 31 days 6 by 31 and then in the whole year we have 365 days yeah because we are calculating annual rate so into 365 you will get 70.64 if for one month the rate is 6% then for the whole year it is 70.64% simple as that yeah so this is the combination see here according to separation method what answer you got 4% and according to replacement method you got 2% so flux method is the combination of that see here we can see the change according to separation method as 4% and change according to replacement method as 2% then in flux method which is the combination of replacement and separation so 4 plus 2 that is what 6 6% 6
that is what is dual method or flux method the combination it's very simple understood it easy right it's very easy right just practice two three problems and you will get it it's very easy okay if you have any doubts please comment or you can also ask the doubt directly by DMing us through Instagram okay easy right all right